good to be here. It's good to continue the series on God's authority and Godly authority that is given to us, the church, as believers. And I want us to go again to our foundation scripture in Matthew chapter 16. Father, we thank you for your word again tonight. We thank you, Lord, for the goodness of your word. We thank you for the revelation of knowledge and mysteries being un unveiled and revealed to us as your church. Thank you, Father God, that you chose not to hide it from us, but you chose to reveal it to us, through us, and in us by the power of your spirit. We thank you, Lord, for tonight. We thank you, Lord, for your word. We ask you, Lord, to come. Holy Spirit, we ask you just to come and unfold and unpack the word of God into our lives, into our spirit man, into our emotional man, into our mental ability, into our physical body. We thank you for every area and every part of our fi fiber of our being, leaping, rejoicing, and blessing you. Thank you for tonight, Lord. We bless you for the school of ministry. We thank you, Lord, for your word that goes forth and that shall never return void in Jesus' name. Jesus said Jesus said when Peter answered you are the Christ the son of the living God Jesus answered and he said blessed art thou Simon by Jonah for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father which is in heaven and I say unto you this day thou art Peter and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven. And whatsoever thou bound on earth shall be bound in heaven, and whatsoever you loose on earth will be loosed in heaven. He charged his disciples to tell no one that he was Jesus the Christ. Very interesting verse 20 after he has revealed himself to the disciples and he's asked them to get revelation of who he is he says to him, keep it to yourself there's a reason for that now in this series we've looked at the authority of god our position in Christ, the principalities and powers that are subject to the Spirit of God. Tonight we're starting into looking at the keys of the kingdom. And I say starting because we're going to go through a couple of things over the next few weeks. Now, Sorry, can you just check for me if the sound, if that microphone is on? Just press the button forward for me. Okay, sorry about that. Just want to make sure that sound is working. Now, most of the keys of the kingdom you already know. In part, or you've got a glimpse of them. And what this series, the next few lessons are going to do... We're going to deep, dive deeper into the Word of God to reveal those keys and unpack the mysteries and join them together. Amen? Amen. Remember the Bible says, well, you see in part. We see the mysteries and the revelations of God in part, but as we mature in the Lord, we see it more clearly or more definitively. Now, I want to ask a question tonight. How many of you have ever been on a treasure hunt? You've been on a treasure hunt maybe when you were a child? <coughs> Was it fun? Yes. Well, I want to tell you, the best treasure hunt you'll ever go on is into the Word of God to find the treasures. Amen. Yes. When you look at the Bible and you open your Word, see it as a treasure hunt. That God wants to. It's like a dad when he's playing hide and seek with his child. And the child, especially a little girl, can't find daddy. 
He starts giving away clues because he wants her to find him. Amen? He doesn't want her to get upset and, 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 and I'm going to use the word here, sad because she can't find daddy. The game is about hiding, but the game is also for daddy to reveal himself when the child can't find him. And the joy on her face when she sees daddy. Come on. Amen. Now when we look at the word of God, God wanted to reveal himself through Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit and through his word. The book of the Bible are the revelation of God and of his Christ. Sadly, most Christians have confined revelation to the last book in the Bible. <laughs> Come on. Revelation is a summing up, it's a summation of the revealing of the power and the glory of God. But it's actually, if you look at Revelation and you study the book of Revelation, it cross-references to the entire Bible. Yes. Amen. And we will do in this school of ministry, we're going to study the book of Revelation okay. in detail yes. and in depth. So that we have an understanding. But you see, you've already got a glimpse of it. You've already got a, a utterance of it through the shadows and types of everything that was in the books from Genesis all the way to the end of the Bible. But because we haven't been looking for the mysteries, we've missed them. Remember the truth. That when the word of God goes forth, on the word is carried a revelation. People often get the word and miss the revelation. God wants us to seek and search for the revelations, the mysteries of the kingdom of God. Amen? Amen. So I want to unpack tonight as a foundation the mysteries or what the keys represent. In the next session and the sessions after that, we're going to unpack each one of the keys. Now, if we understand the keys, we understand the authority that we have in binding and loosing and taking authority over principalities, powers, rulers, and wicked authorities in Jesus. But if we don't understand the keys, you can stand at a lock or a safe. Let me use the word safe. You can do all you like. The door's not going to open naturally. Am I right? But somebody that arrives with a key in their hand, you've been praying up a sweat. <laughs> you've been jumping and gnashing your teeth. And they walk up with a key and they unlock it and they just open it and they smile at you. Come on, somebody. You're locked out of your car. It's hot. You're frustrated. Come on, let's be real. And you phone the locksmith. And he arrives, and while he's still talking to you, he opens the door and he smiles at you. Why? Because he had the key to unlock that door. And when we start to learn and understand the word of God and the revealing of the mysteries or the keys of the kingdom, we'll know what to loose, what to bind, what to lock, what to unlock. With a lot more authority, certainty, but with a lot more joy. Okay? Now, when Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom of heaven, he, he was talking to the apostles as revealed to the church by the Spirit of God. But I want to talk tonight about the role of the apostles in the revealing of the mysteries. Now, when he started with Peter, for flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but my Father which is in heaven. We can premise that by understanding that our natural understanding, even if we have a very high intellectual knowledge and we can read and, and comprehend the Bible, if we apply fleshly knowledge, 
it will never be revealed. Amen? Scholars have spent years and still don't understand the mysteries. But a young child in the Lord who gets filled with the Holy Ghost Start seeing the revelations of the kingdom of God. Why? Because it's revealed by the Spirit and not by flesh. Amen? So Jesus was talking about to the apostles that he wanted them to steward the mysteries of the kingdom and be overseers of that authority. Now we all know that if we give a child authority that they shouldn't have, we got trouble. Come on. Because not because of their insincerity, but their lack of maturity will not allow them to steward that authority. And why is there a lot of Christians that are not walking in God's authority? Because they don't steward it. Because they're not stewarding that authority. Christians would pray fire down from heaven and burn some people up. Come on. Lord, I bind him. Remember we spoke about you can't you know, bind people. We're talking about spirit. So Jesus was talking about revealing to them the mysteries but he says to them, tell no one. Why? Because they hadn't yet learned how to steward it. Come on. He didn't want them to go off half-cocked. Immaturely. How many know that some people in their immaturity mess things up? <laughs> their sincerity I'm not doubting. But their maturity can mess things up. Keys speak of stewardship. Keys speak of, lock, speak of locking and unlocking. Being a steward of something. To keep it safe or to let it loose. So God is talking about our stewardship of the word. Our stewardship of the revelations or the mysteries that are contained in the word by the Spirit of God. Now the great news and the good news tonight is that when we understand the teachings of the apostles, the, the uh, apostles of the Lamb, the first apostles, then the ascension gift apostles like Peter, sorry, Paul and Jane and Barnabas and all, the ascension of they started to understand the mysteries of the kingdom and so when the epistles were written after the book of Acts you see they started to expand on how to steward those keys or the things of the kingdom now interesting remember in Acts chapter 1 verse 3 when Jesus had appeared to them after his resurrection it says he spent 40 days with them teaching them the things pertaining to the kingdom what was he teaching them how to steward the mysteries that they've been revealed. Sometimes I think we just need to spend 40 days with the Lord. Amen. Amen. Can you imagine that? Take, take some leave and just spend 40 days with the Lord. Being taught how to steward the mysteries. Jesus wasn't just talking about authority. See, when we talk about godly authority... We have that authority and we've covered that in a previous session. But God wants us to know how to steward the mysteries. What happens when you cast your pearl before swine? It gets abused. Why? Now I know some young Christians, they just want to preach to their family. And it comes out all wrong. Come on. Yeah. And families get offended and I've said, why? Because they didn't know yet how to steward the mystery of salvation. They didn't know how to steward the love of God. So they just were a bull in a china shop. 
Now, I'll give them a badge for effort, <laughs> zeal. When I was younger, I had a lot of zeal, but little wisdom. And my zeal got me into more trouble than my wisdom could get me out of. And I thank God that he, as I studied the word and I listened to the Holy Spirit, wisdom grew to match my zeal. And the two of them are still in tension some days. And then I have to balance it. Lord, this is my zeal, but let the wisdom be the stewardship. Amen. Amen. See, what Jesus was talking about involved not only spiritual authority, but governance. See, if you steward something, it also implies that we govern something. If we steward it well, another word would be lead. So leadership is about good governance. Amen? <coughs> but better put, good stewardship. Remember, I believe, and I stand on the premise, that there's two titles, if you want to use the word title, that God gives us in the body of Christ. Irrespective of your, of your calling, irrespective of the grace on your life, whether it be <coughs> apostolic, prophetic, pastoral, irrespective of that, God gives us Two titles, steward and servant. Yes. Amen. There's no others. Mm. Apostle is not a title. Prophet is not a title. Mm. Teacher is not a title. Mm. Pastor is not a title, etc. They are functions in the grace of God. They're the carriers of that grace. Yes. We have two titles, steward and servant. And you see, until we understand, and that's what Jesus was teaching the apostles, was the godly governmental office of the graces that they carried. He said, they're kingdom ambassadors and stewards of God's grace. Now, one of the things that God wants to do through the church, as you know, is establish His kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. The kingdoms of this world will become the kingdoms of our Lord and of His Christ. Amen. And you see, unless we know how to steward that, we'll make it confrontational. That's why the, the, the gospel of fear is not the gospel of the kingdom. Uh -huh. Amen? Mm -hmm. Domination theology is not the kingdom. Mm -hmm. The kingdom is stewarded through good leadership or good governance. So one of the things is we unpack the keys of the kingdom, we're going to learn how to steward those keys. I mean, if you're the bank manager and you have the responsibilities of the keys of the vault, did they give you that on your first day in the bank? Uh -uh. <laughs> you got those keys when your level of responsibility and maturity to that establishment was well established so you could be trustworthy. Is that okay? Yes. So God wants to take us as His church and He wants us to become trustworthy with the keys. So that we can work in the authority of God by His divine mandate but in a trustworthy manner. So you're going to hear a lot in the next couple of weeks about the trustworthiness of the stewardship. Not just I've got, I've got some keys, I'm equipped, off I go. 
watch out world, here I come. And uh, there's been a lot of damage, sadly, folk. There's been a lot of damage in the body of Christ and in the unsaved because of the poor stewardship of the Word of God and the grace of God. People have got a quote unquote revelation and they've run off with that revelation and instead of bringing the grace of God, the love of God with that revelation, they've used it as a weapon of mass destruction. Amen? They're armed and dangerous. <laughs> God wants us to mature. See, Jesus said it like this to Peter, I'm giving you and the other apostles the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to reveal to you the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom of heaven so that you can unlock the blessings, the authority, and the power of the kingdom and release righteous judgment on the earth. Amen. I'll say it again. I'm going to reveal... To you the mysteries, the secrets of the kingdom of heaven. So that you can unlock the blessing, the authority, and the power of the kingdom and release his righteous judgment on you. You see, I'm putting the keys on. I need the keys. I need to understand all the keys and operating the keys. Why? So I can unlock the blessing. But I can also unlock, release the authority and the power of God into every situation. And I can bring about the release of righteous judgment. The Holy Spirit convicts of sin. Would you say amen? Yes. So when we release righteous judgment, sin is convicted. Yes. We don't have to convict of sin through condemnation or fear or one of those stupid stuffs. When we release the power of the Holy Spirit because we release a mystery. The Holy Spirit goes into operation immediately and people start to get saved. People start to get healed. I had a contractor here yesterday. And during his break, we got talking. And I started to unpack one of the mysteries to him. And his statement was quite astounding. He says, I've been in church all my life and I've never heard that. I've read my Bible since a little child and I've never seen that. Remember one thing. Most of us have seen the revealing of the mysteries of God in the Word, but we haven't seen them as the revealing of the mystery. We've skipped over them. Because our focus may, have not, uh, may not have been just solely on Christ and giving Him the glory. We were looking for a need. This is a treasure trove this is a treasure chest of the mysteries of God. See, I never refer to things in the Bible as stories. Have you noticed that? Yes. What do I call them? Accounts. Accounts. Why? Because they're in the Word, they're not fables. Yes. I want to know, God, show me how you parted the Red Sea. Mm -hmm. <laughs> There's a mystery there. Yes. Because I don't know, see? <laughs> How did walking around the walls of Jericho bring the walls down? There's a mystery there. And I can tell you this, that every miracle, every account, every incident in the Bible reveals a principle of the keys of the kingdom. So when we read the Bible, we should be asking God not only 
that we get understanding knowledge of what we're reading. But Lord, show me what the principle is or what the key is to this. We were talking on, 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 a, on a pastor's meeting uh, this last week. We are talking about the revival. Asprey. Mm-hmm. And one of the things that I said in the meeting was this. You cannot replicate it. No, Don't try. Mm-hmm. It's sovereign. It's supernatural. Mm-hmm. It's the move of God. Mm-hmm. No man can brand it. No man can own it. No man can claim responsibility for it. And nobody can replicate it because it's the Holy Spirit. Amen. Mm-hmm. And while we're there, let me say this. One of the pastors asked me, Derek, why are we not seeing revival like that across the world? My answer to him was pretty simple. Because most times, and mostly unwittingly or unconsciously, we grieve the Holy Spirit. And when we grieve the Holy Spirit, He doesn't move. When we release the power of the Holy Spirit, He loves to flow and reveal the Father. But when we grieve Him, He doesn't flow. He doesn't move when He's not wanted. Amen. And so the apostles had to learn from Jesus, and we have to learn from them, how to steward the governance of the anointing. How to steward the mysteries of the kingdom. You see, those who are called by God and walk in the grace of an apostolic anointing, God has revealed and unpacked to them the mysteries of the kingdom, the keys. The first century, the true apostles, in in, in, in terms of the the ascension gift and, and, and those apostles, they walk with Christ. But even though they walked with Christ, they hadn't learned yet to steward those things. Let me give you an example, Peter. The very apostle that got a revelation that Jesus is the Christ denied him. The very apostle that got a revelation that he's the Christ wanted to use a sword and do some piercing (laughs) he didn't yet know how to steward the graces of God would that be a fair statement David in the Old Testament that had such promises from God messed up Because he hadn't learned at that time how to steward the grace of God or the mysteries of God. The promise to David was what? What was the promise to David? What was one of the promises to David? From your lineage will come a king. Your son of your life will sit on the throne. David had such a promise from God. But he didn't know how to steward that. Abraham. Bless his heart. Got a promise from God. But his impatience got it a bit messed up. Come on. So we've got to understand how God and the promises that He gave the apostles, how we take those things and we walk with them. I want to use the word carefully here. How we walk with those in such a way that we do not trash them, rubbish them, diminish them, but we steward them with good governance, good leadership, the grace of God. I'm still learning that. I don't know about you. Amen. You see, why did Jesus also tell them 
just hold fast. Number one, they didn't know how to steward it properly yet. Number two, the Holy Spirit had not yet been poured out. The Spirit of, give me some names for the Holy Spirit quickly. The Spirit of Truth. Knowledge. The Teacher. The Comforter. You see, the Holy Spirit, the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, when at the day of Pentecost, when the Spirit of God was poured out, look at Peter, he stood up, and in Acts chapter 2, he preached a revelation message of the kingdom. <coughs> up until that moment, he was cutting ears off. <laughs> what changed? Instead of being led by flesh, or carnality, he was led by the Spirit. If we're going to understand the keys of the kingdom, if we're going to understand the mysteries, we have to be led by the Holy Spirit. We have to be led. See, when Jesus said, I will give you the keys of the kingdom, at that moment in the gospel, it was future tense. They didn't have the keys yet. It was a promise to them. When he sat with them in the book of Acts for 40 days, he, he instructed them what the mysteries of the kingdom were. But it was on the day of Pentecost that Peter was activated. That's why being filled with the Holy Spirit and baptized in the Holy Spirit is the activation of the saints of God. Up until then, we're trying to figure it out on our own. Up to then, we're walking in our natural understanding in an old wineskin. And when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, we are a new wineskin filled with new wine. Amen? Mm -hmm. Jesus. Now, we've got to understand how, how, how the disciples, remember, they didn't have the Bible. They didn't know how it was going to turn out. They were living it day to day in reality. So Jesus told them, I'm going to give you the keys of the kingdom. I'm going to reveal to you the kingdom of heaven. You're going to be able to bind and loose, have authority. Then we know a little, little while later, in Caesarea Philippi, he was in the upper room in the city of Jerusalem a few hours before his crucifixion. Jesus gathered his disciples together and in John, if you read John 16, he says, listen, it's expedient. Now, I don't know what that word is in, in Afrikaans, but it's expedient for you that I go away. It's good for you. It's a blessing to you that I go away. Now, can you imagine how the disciples reacted to that? They had walked with Jesus for three and a half years. They'd seen him do miracle signs, wonders. They'd seen him just do this, this marvelous, miraculous stuff. Then he says, good, it's good for you that I leave. They didn't understand it. Come on. One of the mysteries that Jesus was trying to teach them was, I'm going to give... If I don't go, he carried on to say, John 16, if I don't go, the Holy Spirit cannot come. They didn't get it. They missed it. Remember the multitudes were crying out to Jesus to be crowned as a natural king. But Jesus was not looking for a natural kingdom. He was looking for a spiritual kingdom. So we're going to unpack in future sessions. One of the keys is not looking for a natural kingdom, but looking always to the spiritual kingdom. And how often as the church, as, as saints of God, do we look for something in the natural? I want a physical manifestation of blessing. I want a physical manifestation of healing. And there's nothing wrong with all of those things. Don't get me wrong. But we keep, we keep going back to our carnal nature of looking for something in the natural when Jesus wanted something in the spiritual. And that's a key. And I'll unpack that later. Now, here are the disciples sitting with Jesus. 
It says, listen guys, I'm going to go away. It's good for you that I go. So that the Holy Spirit can come upon you. But they'd seen Jesus heal the sick. Blind eyes open. Demons were cast out. They watched him take some loaves and some fish and feed a multitude never basket that they carried around. They physically witnessed those miracles. Then he says, I'm leaving. Cheers, guys. I don't think they were delighted. Because they didn't understand, see. Peter got a revelation that even he, I'm going to say, almost fully didn't understand when he said, you are the Christ, the Son of the living God. He didn't fully understand it because it wasn't yet revealed to him in fullness or in maturity. But God, Jesus said, but hey, flesh and blood hasn't revealed that to you, but my Father which is in heaven. And if you study, remember the red letters? I said, read the red. If you read everything that Jesus said, every mystery or the principles of the kingdom are contained in the red. Because Jesus said it, see? He came to reveal the Father. What did he say? Everything you see me do is of the Father. If you've seen me, you've seen the Father. Didn't he say that? Yes. But how many times have we read that but we haven't seen the Father? We've seen Jesus. Because we haven't been looking for the revealing of the mystery. And maybe, just maybe, we've been stuck in a mindset of looking for a natural kingdom when God wants to establish a supernatural spiritual kingdom. Just maybe. It's better that I go away. Now, the word better, or in some translations, it's expedient for you that I go away. How many would say tonight, <coughs> if you could walk with Jesus, right now, if Jesus could appear in the natural and walk with you for a week and then say, I'm going, how would you feel? Oh, <laughs> pretty, pretty stressed out, come on. Yes. So we've got to understand the disciples were acting on emotion, not spirit. Mm -hmm. And again, we'll unpack in, in, in future sessions. The revealing of the mysteries of the kingdom are not emotional, but spiritual. See, God, what he was talking about, he says the Holy Spirit, when he comes, will take the mysteries and the secrets of the kingdom and reveal them to you. We don't see too many accounts in the Bible of the disciples preaching. Since they went out and people were healed and they came back and said, hey, even the demons are subject to... But we don't see their sermons recorded until after the Holy Spirit is poured out. Peter stands up and he preaches and it's recorded what he preaches. Once the Holy Spirit indwells us, the mysteries can be revealed through us. Once the Holy Spirit is in filled us, the mysteries can be revealed through us. Another passage of scripture that we see, I want to teach you to join the dots of scripture, join the passages together, so it creates a pattern. The whole earth waits, groans in expectation of the revealing of the sons of God. What's meant to be revealed in the sons of God? The mysteries of the kingdom. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's what the earth's waiting for. The revealing of the mysteries. Remember, if we go back into Genesis, when the earth was formed, it was formed by the glory of God. Amen. And then all the trees and every other bird and creature and everything on the earth was just so happy. 
then Adam came and sort of messed it up a little bit. The whole of creation is waiting for the reset so that the revealing of the sons of God can bring it back to the former glory. The Holy Spirit must be revealed to the apostles who then taught from the book of Acts onwards the revealing of the mysteries of God. What do they base it on? So it's important tonight that we understand that the authority and the power that God gave those apostles to bind and loose has been released to us as well as the church. The essential qualification is to be led by the Spirit and ready to receive what God wants to give us as the revealing of the mysteries of the kingdom of God. God wants us to fully understand what He wants to reveal. What do we want to reveal? Think about our prayer life. Think about when we're praying for others. What are we trying to reveal to them? What's the biggest mystery? I'm jumping ahead to next week. But what's the biggest mystery? Salvation. Yes. He could take somebody that was sin, born into sin, filthy in unrighteousness, and by the divine exchange make us righteous and bring us into his, into his presence. Amen. That's a mystery. Mm. How do you do that? You see, when we got saved, the day we got saved, the instant we got saved, nothing in our physical body changed, in a sense. I was as tall as I was, I never grew taller. Nothing changed in the natural, but everything changed in the spirit. I was a brand new man. Come on. I was brand new. What changed? What changed? It's a mystery. <laughs> and some people looked at you after your salvation and said, scratch the head, it's a mystery. Because <laughs> you know, they ask what happened to you. Yeah. See, I got radically saved. Three weeks after my salvation, I preached the, my first message. That's radical. From being on the expulsion list at school to then becoming a favored son in the house. That's a mystery. God chose that, not me. When all of a sudden you get promoted and you leap above everybody else who's been in line for months or years, it's a mystery. But it's God doing His work. See, there's many people today in the body of Christ who love the Lord. But they don't believe in the supernatural power or the manifestation of the glory of God on this earth as it is now. See, they preach a post, uh, what we call postponement theology. They're waiting for Jesus to come back and everything's going to be okay. Just hang on till Jesus comes. That's not a way to live in Christ. It's contrary to the word, by the way, but it's not a way to live. But because I haven't grasped or understood the revealing by the Spirit of God, the mysteries of the kingdom now, they postpone the kingdom to a future date. And many of us, forgive me, what do you call that when you cut out a whole lot of pictures and you make one picture out of it? A collage. Most Christians have got a doctrinal collage. Instead of the knowledge of the mysteries of the kingdom. Would you say amen? We've taken a little bit of this that we like. And a little bit of that we like. A little bit of fatties. A little bit of moanies. And we put it all together. Because we haven't gone into the word. To unpack what God is wanting to give us. And that's what this 
session, at least this series is about, is going back into the foundations that the apostles laid through the anointing of the Holy Spirit so that we have a foundation in which to build off and build from. We have to rediscover what these apostles knew. And it's not beyond finding out. Number one, the Holy Spirit's our teacher. The Holy Spirit will guide us in all truth, the Bible says. That's why, and, and listen, study to be approved is a good thing, and studying and getting, getting qualifications is great. But Jesus said, you have no need that man should teach you, but the Holy Spirit. Now we need help, we need sessions like this, the session that we had last week, that round table session, did that help some of you? Yes. Amen? We need things like that. But the essence and the center of everything that we need to learn and study and be taught comes from from the Holy Spirit. Amen? And God will give me different uh, angles of the interpretation. He'll give me different facets. He'll give you different facets. And when we put it all together, we get, instead of seeing in part or seeing dimly, we start to see the whole thing. But many Christians today, they're looking for something that they can't find because they're looking for it with a natural eye instead of a supernatural eye. Many Christians, because of their short-sightedness, don't believe in the raising up on Messiah's day, which is now, of the saints of God to walk in their authority. Many still think it's blasphemous to say we have the authority of God. And then what they try and do is like take the edge off it so they round the doctrine a little bit, smooth it a little bit. You see, if we're going to understand the keys of the kingdom, we have to understand righteousness and unrighteousness as clear as day and night. Sin and righteousness. We have to understand them clearly and plainly. Because we can't blame the gospel. Amen. We can't blend the Word of God with a little bit of righteousness and a little bit of sin. You know, just make it more palatable for people. We're talking tonight about stewarding, being good stewards of the things of the kingdom, the mysteries of the kingdom. Now, The four pillars, the four pillars of the kingdom. The apostles got a revelation. Jesus taught them four principal revelations. Number one, he was Christ the king. Number two, they got a revelation of the church and who the church is, identity. Number three, they got a revelation of the structure and the governance of the authority of the church. Then number four, <coughs> they got a revelation of the mission and the mandate of the church. And if we will get those four pillars established in our life, the revelation of Christ as the King, the revelation of who the church is and our identity, the revelation of the structure of the governance and the stewardship of the authority of God, and a revelation of the mission and mandate of the church, we'll start to see the mysteries unfolded for us. Is that okay? See, most of these revelations, as I said at the beginning, we know in part or in pieces <coughs> or have a glimpse of them here, there or somewhere. In the next few weeks, we're going to spend time unpacking firstly those four pillars. Then we're going to start to unpack the mysteries. 
We're going to unpack again faith. We're going to unpack healing. We're going to unpack hearing the voice of God. We're going to unpack it. Because most people struggle with these things. See? We unpacked the other night binding and loosing. We unpacked it. We unpacked authority over principalities and powers. We unpacked it. In the divine exchange, if you remember, we unpacked what Jesus did in every area of the divine exchange. We unpacked it. I want to ask you when you read the word, please resist. And hear me carefully, don't take me out of context. I'm not against these reading plans that you can read the Bible in 80 days or whatever it is. The sad thing for me in that, we skip over yeah. the yes. revelation that that part of the word carries. Mm. By the end of this semester, my heart's desire was I can call any one of you and give you a verse and say you've got five minutes. And you'll read the verse, <coughs> and revelation will jump out at you from that verse. Because this is a treasure trove Thank of the revealing of the heart of the Father. Mm. Remember what I said? The Bible for me can be divided into three sections. The Old Testament, the Gospel, or the Old Testament, excuse me, reveals to me the character of God. His character, his nature, his ability. The Gospels unpack for me the mission of Christ. The Epistles, Acts and the Epistles, unpack for me how we are to apply the character of God, the nature of Christ, and live it out of you. So when I read the Old Testament, I'm looking for the character of God to be revealed. And a shadow and type of Jesus to come. When I read the Gospels, it's how Jesus showed me experientially how to live the character of God. And then when I get into Acts onwards to Revelation, it's how do I live that out so I can bring glory to Him. Makes homiletics a lot easier. Makes understanding the Bible so much more fun than reading it like a religious Bible study. You know one of the sad things when I was young in the Lord and was studying the Word? Normally we sat on the floor. I don't know why we sat on the floor. Maybe because we were young and able. <laughs> but you sat there three or four Bibles open. Your Strong's Concordance. Your Dake's Concordance. Your Matthew Henry Commentary. All looking very theological. Very seldom, I'll be honest with you, very seldom do we ask Holy Spirit, would you come sit with us and teach us? Man, it looks so spooky, spiritual to have all these books open. And you're studying from this one and that one. And that was great. It was knowledge. But how much quicker would it have been to learn the mysteries of God if we just said Holy Spirit? <laughs> I encourage you when you're studying the Word, ask the Holy Spirit. Not Google. Oh, sorry, did I say that? <laughs> Google's a very, not even a poor imitation of both of us. Ask the Lord for revelation. He says, I'll teach you revelation, knowledge, wisdom, and understanding. So as we start next week and we start unpacking the keys, who is the Christ? The Son of the Lord. Who is he? 
gave you tonight a sheet of paper if you're watching on, on, on the channel, if I ask you to take a piece of paper right now and write down who is Jesus. Some of us might write a sentence. Some might, might write a paragraph. Here is Jesus. If you can't write out the whole Bible, you must upon Jesus. <laughs> Does that make sense? Because he is the word, see? So if we can't write out the whole Bible, we must something of Jesus. My brain is limited. But the Spirit is unknown. When I read this Bible, He, the Word, became flesh and dwelt among us. Am I right? Mm -hmm. In the beginning was the Word. And the Word, finish it for me. The Word was God. He is the Word. Amen. John chapter 1, verse 1. <coughs> Sorry? Four. In the beginning. Before time, he was. Amen. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were created through him, and without him, nothing was created that was created. He's the Word. So when we can't repeat the word, we've missed a piece of Jesus. Wow. How many want to get to know Jesus? If you want to get to know Jesus, because Jesus will reveal the Father, then get to know the word. I can't wait to wake up in the morning to get into the word. I sometimes get upset with myself when I open my Bible to a, to a page and it's blank. There's no scribble on it. <coughs> it means I haven't read that yet. Probably. Amen? And yet I've read the Bible many times. But I haven't read that properly because every scripture is something that God wants to reveal. Look for it. Be hungry to search for it. When you had that treasure hunt, did you give up before you found the prize? And the beauty about the Word of God and the Holy Spirit, He doesn't hide this from us. He wants to reveal it. He wants to show us the mysteries. But He can only reveal mysteries to those that will steward it diligently, properly. I mean the governance of it. Otherwise we're dangerous. I want to know more about the mysteries. How about you? Are you ready for the next session? Yes. I mean, I want you to take a, a board, a notebook, something to write on. A fresh one, a clean one, a new one. I want you to write on the front of that notebook the mysteries revealed. The mysteries revealed. And every time God shows you something in the Word that you did not know, you quickly take out that book and you write down what that mystery was. What is God showing or revealing to you? And watch how quickly you fill up that book. Because he wants to, he desires to reveal to us, his church, the mysteries. Amen? It doesn't keep us in the dark. How many here is your surname is Mushroom? None of you. You don't grow in the dark, you grow in the light. Amen? God bless you tonight. Any questions?